people have always needed special places to protect them from the weather. Places for cooking and eating, places for privacy and safety from enemies, and even places for work and entertainment. The most important places are shelters. The first shelters were caves, or homes built with available natural materials like tree branches, animal skins, or even snow. Today, homes are built in many styles and materials and are usually designed by architects. Caves and simple huts provide a single space for living, eating, and working. As cultures became more sophisticated, spaces were separated into different rooms, each one having a specific purpose. Some specialized types of houses, like feudal castles or emperor's palaces, were also the government buildings and often had hundreds of rooms. They were lavishly decorated to display both the power and wealth of the owner and the power and wealth of the land he governed. Some of the greatest surviving examples of historical architecture are not houses, but rather monumental buildings and ceremonial sites. The pyramids of Egypt were tombs built for the pharaohs and housed the soul and its belongings on the journey into the afterlife. The ancient Greeks built public arenas for art and temples, like the Parthenon in Athens, to honor their gods and to provide a place of worship. The system of architectural proportion and decoration developed in Greece inspired later Roman building. Its simplicity and elegance remained the basis of Western architecture until the mid-19th century. The magnificent cathedrals of medieval Europe displayed the most profound expression of religious sentiment. The architects and artists worked in anonymity, their Gothic arches and towering spires proclaiming their faith in a God in heaven. In Renaissance cathedrals, domes tended to replace the spires of medieval churches. Since ancient times, large public buildings such as these have required special materials and organization of labor. Timber frames and clay bricks supported houses, but monuments required stone blocks and large gangs of labor to move them. Bricks and stone blocks formed the basic building material of most European and American architecture until the modern era. Modern buildings, however, used strong steel and reinforced concrete girders covered in glass and plastic. Powerful machines enable the large-scale construction of 20th century office towers. Skyscrapers have become the dominant structures in the center of most cities in the world. Exciting new architectural designs have made use of radical new materials and experimental visual styling. Churches, art galleries, and performing arts halls provide the architect with an opportunity to stretch creative powers. They have often become landmarks of particular cities, as the famous opera house has become a distinctive emblem of Sydney, Australia. The ground area surrounding buildings is often designed specially by landscape architects. Parks, water fountains, and sculpture gardens provide restful and visually interesting areas within the city core. Since the decline of interest in modernist towers, many traditional styles of design from around the world have been brought together in the architecture of post-modernism. Architects working in this style are calling for a more human scale of building and trying to make structures stylistically appropriate to the surrounding community. Like the visual art world in the 1980s, there is no single dominant style of architecture. Contemporary architects are free to stretch their imaginations in any direction.